Hello and welcome to the Endless Possibilities podcast. My name is Garrett and this is episode 41. And today I am joined by a very special guest, Casey Clare. Hi, Casey. Hi, Garrett. Hello, (laughs) how are you? Sure, sure. Yeah, so I, I'm just going to have a little bio about you here, Casey. I'm just going to introduce you. Um, so Casey was born in Las Vegas in the 1960s. She was raised and spent most of her life there until the early 2000s when she moved to Los Angeles to study more closely with her spiritual teacher. At this time, she had been meditating, practicing and studying multiple decades and had herself begun the service of teaching. Her spiritual disciplines were beginning to culminate in Kundalini activity. And in 2009, she had an awakening. The awakening centered strongly in the out of body experience. She discovered that since childhood, she had been time traveling from future points in time, both in and beyond this lifetime. She was visiting herself in past points in time, creating what she perceived as time loops. This activity brought her attention, sorry, this activity brought to her attention her involvement with ET beings. The ET beings brought to her attention her connection with crystals and the capacity to work with them for communication purposes. The skill had been laying dormant and was now newly being reactivated. It allows the crystals to act as an extension of her own consciousness, uh, assisting her in acting as a transmitter of signals that are sent from one point in time to another point in time. Our point in time, to be exact. The signals are visual in nature. Through them, she is able to render visible the ET beings who are present working through her with our planet. She is here to share to the extraterrestrial reality, the extraterrestrial dimension of human consciousness. Casey, what that last bit, what it just explained that to me. Which part exactly? <clears throat> I mean, the, the, the extraterrestrial dimensions of human consciousness. Mm hmm. Well, right now, humans, uh, Earth humans, are confined to their planet, Earth. Yeah. And that's what the third dimension is all about. Um, When we graduate from the third dimension or third grade, uh, seems to make sense to some people. When I say we graduate from it out into the fourth grade, out into the fourth dimension, dimensions four, five, and six are galactic space. That's where all the other planets are and life on all of the other planets. That's the extraterrestrial dimensions of our own consciousness. It's the rest okay. of the rest of okay. well, creation. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. I can't wait to get into all of this. We're going to have a fascinating <laughs> chat. Uh, so Casey, uh, I, okay. So let me just briefly explain where I came in contact with you. So about 40, 2010, so about 14 years ago, I became infatuated with the whole OBE phenomenon. Um, I wanted to have out-of-body experiences. I bought every single book I could on it. And I came across a website called um, The Astral Pulse. And yeah. I came across Casey. And Casey was was making mm-hmm. videos about this phenomena and posting them before anyone was doing any sort of like spiritual videos or astral on YouTube. I think YouTube must have just only come out as well, Casey, at the time, right? Yeah, YouTube shortly came out sometime in 2008. And my awakening happened in 2009. And I immediately started making the videos. Yeah. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. (laughs) Perfect timing. So I was watching Casey's videos and Mm -hmm. um. I started having my own OBEs and I kind of followed Casey on Facebook and then I lost kind of contact with her and came back in contact with Casey uh, on the the Tom Campbell, My Big Toe form. Um, And then I think we connected again on Facebook and I kind of been following the the Casey's work and what goes on and the the work with the crystals as well. So we're going to get into all of that. Casey, 
welcome. Welcome. I'll give you a proper uh, introduction there and a proper welcome. Um, so thanks. Thanks for being here. So, thanks. Casey, can you give us a little bit of background just on what got you started in in all your your work and your your awakening? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, to make what's happening now make more sense. We can dive into just way back in childhood. So sure. my, my awakening, in fact, the whole story, uh, it's easier for me to tell if I can put it on a dividing point, uh, the point of 2009. So prior to 2009, that would be prior to my 44th year in this body. Um, going way back to childhood, I'm somebody who can remember my dreams. Top of the night to bottom of the morning, uh, my entire dream state I could bring back with me. In fact, in the morning when I would get up to start my day, it was really hard for me to come out of my dream state and my dream state awareness. So for a period of time, maybe 20, 30 minutes every morning, I would be walking in both fields. In the field I was in, in the inner field, walking down the hallway toward the bathroom to get up to start my day. Um, it took me again, a ridiculous period of time to let that inner field go. So dream state and dream state awareness is really big. And during this time, I'm having repeating dreams. Uh, in fact, until I'm 20 years old, all I'm having is repeating dreams. Every night, uh, I'm dreaming of something that happens regularly. And one of these repeating dreams is another lifetime. And I'm in this lifetime and I'm dreaming of it each night from certain sets of points. And the points that I'm dreaming between are never the same. Every night it's entirely unique. Um, and then another repeating dream is I'm going to say a nightmare. <laughs> and this is how I was in the dream state interpreting my ET abductions. And so I'm trying to run, but I can't. I My feet and my legs are being magnetically sealed to the floor. <laughs> and I'm just putting forth enormous effort to, you know, try to get myself away. And long story short, in that one, I'm eventually caught up with and I'm shot with a ray of some kind. And then I just lose all consciousness. So mm, this is something that I'm not going to let myself be aware of until 2009, which is why it's happening in this format, so that when I get back in the morning, I let it go. <laughs> okay. Um, so things so like- So would you say something was happening that you just weren't ready to, to know about until 2009? I would have immediately started talking. That would have immediately put me in danger. Okay, yes. okay, uh -huh. okay. So okay. I had to wait until a certain point. Uh, there's always a certain amount of us that are up front uh, taking the limelight, so to speak. Uh, we are targets when we do that. Um, but it's to protect all of the rest that are going to be coming up on the wave behind us, right? There was those mm. on, out there before I got there, and now it was time for me to come out also. Um, but yeah, back then, not time yet. Okay. Yeah. So big dream state awareness. Um, and, uh, I'm already having ET contact my, my whole life. Uh, but again, I'm not going to let myself be consciously aware of that until my 44th year. And then the other thing is with my vision. Now, I didn't realize that my vision was any different than anybody else's <clears throat> until much later. Uh, but there's light that appears in my visual field that doesn't appear in others according to what others tell me anyway mm -hmm. so um i have this kind of reverse vision where i see uh void uh void and then space and then the particles that compose space and then the particles that compose people and things in in that order so my attention can even isolate one of those particles and go inside and I've always been able to do this. Uh, it would come to my attention uh, profoundly uh, in the rare instances that I would get sick <laughs> as a kid. So when I was sick as a kid, three days in bed, no food, no water. You know how that is for a kid? You're laying on the bed. 
Yeah. <laughs> nothing to do. I would start to see the particles and I would play with the particles with my attention and find I could go inside them. Yeah. So things like this are happening. In fact, light it, itself is something that could um, not just capture my attention, but uh, render me perfectly still. Um, it, it could capture me to the point of me losing time. And th this would happen as well. So, you know, and I mean anything, uh, the sun striking the hubcap of a car, um, <laughs> uh, you know, thing, things like this. Uh, and I started playing with this uh, as soon as um, I discovered spirituality and yoga and meditation, uh, which was quite young. I was 12 years old. Uh, and I started playing with a practice called Tritak, which is conscious gazing. So I just took what was already happening and made it a deliberate practice. And I noticed when I would take my gaze into any light source, it would immediately sort of break down into, what do I want to say, uh, into a symbol or uh, pattern that symbolized to me the uh, oneness of all things. <laughs> and rather than go into that, I'll just continue along the line of light could always capture my attention. There was always a relationship with me, with the light, directly with light itself. And that's when I began realizing I had this sort of kaleidoscopic vision that, you know, could uh, break down. It could zoom in or zoom out uh, as I wished. Fascinating. <laughs> and so this is part of what is in play, jumping way ahead to what is now happening with the crystals. And so I'll, I'll, I will just say that that is what is going to make what I am able to do with the crystals make more sense. Okay. Okay. So then in 2009, um, I had moved to Los Angeles to, to uh, study more closely with a teacher that was here. His name is Eric Schiffman. He's a yoga teacher. And specifically, he focuses his um, practice on meditation. And he was one of the few people doing that at that time. And so I was uh, upping my disciplines. I was practicing every day, uh, multiple times every day at home, at his home practices, in classes with him. And that accelerated my process. In 2009, I had the awakening. Now, I will say I'm a yoni and not a tantric. <laughs> and so it really surprised me when the kundalini occurred. Um, so... Uh, a lot of people who are practicing yoga are knowingly practicing to bring out the kundalini because their practices are more tantric. But mine weren't. Uh, they were atma vichara, so, self inquiry. They were brahmacharya. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So more so, awareness based rather than than experience and going into negative space. space. Neti neti, not okay. this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. So in 2009, it begins coming to my attention uh, that in the night, strange things are occurring. <laughs> so uh, I begin waking in the middle of the night to electrical currents running through my body, uh, full body. And it takes a while for this to stay at the front of my attention. But when it does, I start investigating it, you know, just asking other people around me, <laughs> do you ever have anything like this happen? I, yeah, have, no, yeah. I, I have no idea what was <laughs> happening. <laughs> you know? yeah. And um, uh, for, for me, that, that, that process was a painful process. I had what I call a top down Kundalini awakening. So it was uh, the crown chakra that my attention went to first. And this is why I say I had a top-down awakening. I think that uh, I think that everybody does. I think the energy comes down into the system, but then it heads Moladara and, you know, unwrap the coil, so to speak. Yeah. Yes. But I was aware right from the beginning, as soon as it hit the top of my head, I was aware. So that's how I was able to go out of body every night during these processes. One, but I wasn't allowed to go out 
uh, for a couple hours because I was made to view in physical space what was actually happening to my body during this process. So I witnessed the entire restructuring of my physical system, which was to my conscious state of attention and human cent uh, central nervous system, painful. Uh, it and Casey, was that the, the, the Kundalini that was rewiring it and you were witnessing what was going on at nighttime? It was. And the ETs are involved in this, by the way. This is another part that a lot of people aren't aware of and leave out. But OK, so the OBE is involved because your uh, consciousness expands out beyond 3D physical space. OK, mm -hmm. and I would be on yeah. board craft on the table. Um, bright white light at the crown of my head scans my entire body and that's what this is this is a light that is scanning and reading my entire physical system um and as soon as the light would scan there was an energy and bilaterally it would begin clearing my body starting with my feet synchronous with my feet my crown so it would work from the crown down toward the perineum and from the feet up toward the perineum and that whole process in the process, uh, it literally felt like my bones and were being Casey, broken and reset. Yeah. You know? Was the light because okay, because we, we both we've both been around Tom Campbell, right? And Tom Campbell mm -hmm. will say something like, you know, the light is your metaphors and the ETs are your metaphors. And for me, I didn't have the light. I had more like the vibrations that you were experiencing. I had to, I would wake up with the with them going from the tips of my toes all the way to the top of the head, up and down the body, right? right. But I didn't I didn't really equate that with kundalini at the time. Actually, I didn't even know what kundalini was at the time when I was was having it. So do you do you feel that them the OB the prelude to OBE with the vibrational state, is that the kundalini energy? The vibrational state. Because hmm. it feels similar to me, right? They're just in a, indifferent. In a, in a yeah. sense, yes. And in a sense, no, depending on the experience through themselves and how they are going to conceptualize it for themselves. So okay. a lot of spiritual seekers are going to conceptualize that with Kundalini just due to what they've heard of Kundalini yeah. in the past. It's like, oh, there, there's a match. You know, I've got yeah. that concept because yeah. how do you even conceptualize something like that? It's shocking. It's <laughs> and, yes. and, and, and my central nervous system, um, uh, wasn't the same for, for years. In fact, I, I, I shook, I was, I was very, very nervous, very on edge. Uh, if I started vocalizing this, especially my whole body mm. would start to shake. I would have to sit on my hands. Um, my my ears used to start ringing when I'd speak about it to people. I'd get this ringing and whooshing noise, and it would feel really strange to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the energy or the higher beings uh, coming in. So you 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 may have some potential channeling options there, if that okay. were happening to you okay. when you began well, this. <laughs> we'll we'll get to that but more about your story right so so yeah yeah so, so i'm, on, so I'm okay. on the table the light scans me the body's yeah. being restructured and then after a couple of hours of this happening and you know this is happening in a dark room it's the middle of the night you know it's midnight to two o'clock in the morning something like this uh you know there's nobody else in the room you know you're alone there and there's all of these I mean, just bizarre sensations running through the body. I mean, almost like, uh, well, sometimes it would be as though a hand were on me, but like sort of clamping down like a like a massage motion. But there was nothing there to, you know, conceptualize that sensation being there in the first place. So th these things are shocking to the body. Um, I would be uh, moved in the bed. So you know what it feels like when when you yourself use your own musculature to roll yourself over on your side. Imagine laying there and you not moving you, but you being moved into a whole nother position. It's shocking on the body. So there's a lot. Uh, to was it your physical body, Casey? The physical, physical body, body or was it the astral body? OK, now at this point, I'm in my room. This is all in 3D physical space. Yeah. OK, um, so a lot of that. So the, these are what people call Kriyas involuntary okay. movements okay. right okay so it's yeah. a movement yeah. Yeah. that your body is making that you're not making yourself 
So these were just very large examples of Kriyat, yeah. Okay, and and the Kriyas were, so you, so, okay, so let me just get into the mind of Casey going through this experience of having a Kriya mm -hmm. in bed. And was the mind filling in the Kriya with the, the idea of like, a, a being doing it because i've done this right i've felt energy and and gone oh that has to be like energy beings doing stuff in my head and because i just mm -hmm. didn't have the answers not yet not okay. yet because mm, a really interesting thing happened when the crown opens first your uh, normal systems are shut down so my cognitive faculties uh, were different than normal my memory was entirely absent. I could no longer use my memory to like to look back on on things. I was right there in the present moment, and that's all I that's that's all that was it. <laughs> mm. So there was my awe. Uh, there was my uh, central nervous system on fire. Um, I'm going to say at this point, I'm not experiencing fear, or if it is there, it's way in the back seat. There's mostly awe and extreme curiosity. And again, the central nervous system, the body having its own experience of what was happening. Yeah. 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 It seems to be completely separate to the awareness. I, I, I've just, I had a, a, a family emergency last week with, with, involved one of my children and uh, it was pretty serious. But what I took from it was the consciousness was one, unaffected by it, remained completely calm you know no fear no nothing whatever was going to happen was going to happen but my body really really like for de like for the last four days now i've been exhausted it feel my, feels like my body's been through a traumatic experience so the two seem to be completely different right the body's yeah. still here in the physical reality it's still the cells of the body are still susceptible to the environment around it the body is a living high alert. having an experience yeah. of its own. I generally refer to it as the central nervous system, um, but we could yeah. easily call it the body. Even the independent cells, and I, I will say independent consciousness cells, because they are conscious living individuals, entities, mm. uh, have their own experience of what's going on here as well. It transfers into what they're experiencing as their reality. And so mm. all of this is, is coming in. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah, the, the OBE starts. Uh, <laughs> I have two missing time experiences that, that lead into this. So following myself being aware of the electrical currents happening in the middle of the night uh, and finally waking up in the morning and letting myself remember that it had actually happened. Uh, I go to sleep one night and I laid myself down, closed my eyes and Literally, what seemed to me five minutes later, I opened my eyes and it was morning. Nothing happened in between. It, it, blew, it blew my mind. At that point, I had no ground. I was standing on no ground at that point. That, that blew my mind totally, uh, but I guess not entirely totally because they did it to me again, uh, not the next night, but the night after that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and then following these two missing time experiences, the OBEs start, and and one of my very first OBEs is an abduction, or what people call an abduction. Uh, but first, but first, I'm feeling somebody in my room. <laughs> I, I've experienced that. Yeah, and this is the first time I'm aware they're coming right down into my room. And um, I'm feeling that I can hear the person. They're running down to my feet and I can feel them pick up my feet and they're stretching my feet away from my body, like way long, like giving me a Shavasana adjustment. You, you know how you would adjust somebody in Shavasana? Mm -hmm. And then they run over to the crown of my head and I can feel them like doing something there and then run over to my feet and pull it way wrong. <laughs> so I'm being helped out of body. It takes a little bit of this happening and me not going into fear over it before I realize I'm in the etheric version of my room and not 3D space. Mm -hmm. And I can see him. And he's an indigenous Indian boy, maybe 15 years old, dark skin, white loincloth, white sash in his hair, jet black hair. 
Um, and I'm like, who are you? And he comes over to my ear and he says, my name is Mesahari. <laughs> I'm, like, wow. I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, I heard a name. <laughs> and I, I'm like, repeat the name and I'm repeating the name because I didn't want, to, I wanted to bring it back with me yeah. into physical space. Um, and I'm like, where are you from? Um, you know, I'm, and I'm like thinking my, my room, what, I'm asking him, what's he doing in my room? But he tells me the planet he's from that did not make it back with me, but it started with an S. <laughs> Um, yeah, and it was very likely serious. But in that experience, two of him were present. One as the younger boy that I was talking to, and one is a 22-year-old boy. And there's an interesting story. I uh, that it looked identical, save the age. And I find out later that that's actually the same entity who actually incarnated in, into two different lifetimes in the same body. I had them both there at the same time. Mm and this experience wow. yeah and wow. then following this the tractor beam locks onto me now this is what i'm always trying to run away from when i'm a little girl right the tractor beam locks on i'm, get, I'm getting abducted i'm getting s literally suctioned out of my body <laughs> i'm going up into the corner of the room there and i'm screaming down for at myself for help and which was always my mo to scream through for help and then it, it's just too much for my central nervous system. I literally pass out right there on the ceiling. And then a moment later, it's like, boom, I come right back into full consciousness. Mm. And the craft, I know I'm in the craft. I recognize the experiences having happened my whole life. I'm on the table and I'm like going, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, it's really happening. <laughs> You know, and then I shoot myself the message, whatever you do, don't open your eyes. You know, I was, yeah, I, I would never let my, myself open my eyes in that particular experience. Now, many entities come from me. I've been on the table. I can't even tell you how many times and how many different craft. It's specifically these beings that caused this effect in me. And I still don't know why, because I still can't open my eyes, but I have started to make some breakthrough. But anyway, that was the experience. That was what kick-started things along. After that night, every night, the Kundalini energy came. It would work on clearing my system. It would hold me wide awake during this process for hours. And then I would get to go out. <laughs> And just extraordinary, just extraordinary every night for four years or just about every night for four years. Mm. So, OK, similarities, right? I've had the, very similar, right? I had my first OBE was something came, the hands grabbed me underneath the arms, pulled me out of body, threw me through the ceiling. I started flying um, and then the vibrations would come, right? Not every night, but similar, two or three nights a week. And it went on for about a year and a half, right? Me getting out, me not doing a very good job of it. Just, you know, of all of the great things I could have been doing in the universe, I would like <laughs> go to someone's house and stand outside and look at the house, right? I could never, I could never, you know, think of something better to do with my OBs. Um, but the vibrations, right? And, and, um. The, the energy, right? That familiar energy and the whooshing in the ears. But you somehow equated that to the Kundalini as well, right? Um, I'm just wondering again, yeah. is it, is it, yeah. Because I was, I was made to stay. I was pinned in physical space while the Kundalini worked through my body. I mean, it was, this was an hours long experience and this is not the vibrational mm. state. The vibrational okay. state is a different frequency of vibration. Its purpose and okay. function is entirely different. The Kundalini restructures your physical body. And mm. to do that while in your fully conscious state, because again, it was the crown chakra open that got my attention was up there just going, <laughs> you know, oh my gosh, watching the whole thing, you know? So um, I think I did that so that I could help more people. Uh, you know, there's uh, a lot of uh, people don't understand what this is. I barely do having experienced it. So I, I believe that I, I witnessed the uh, degree of the process that I did so that I could uh, 
help send, pin some tails on the donkey, so to speak, you know, to help a, a fuller picture of everything uh, be seen. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that it, it was a very uh, uncomfortable uh, part of the process. But, you know, I would and I would not have to just lay there. Uh, I, in fact, couldn't just lay there a lot of times. I would have to, you know, uh, do asana. Uh, inversions in particular were very helpful. Anything that, uh, you know, helped me feel some traction through the spine was going to be very helpful. And all of this was going on, even while I was moving and going about and doing what I was doing. I was, you know, retaining a meditative state and uh, j just witnessing, you know, that was how I'm able to even describe what the process was like for me now. Yeah, so that's different. Now, before you start going out of body and the vibrational state comes on, I was big into the vibrational state. Um, in mm -hmm. fact, it was the internal workings of the shift from state to state that was so fascinating to me rather than landing locations. But as far as landing locations, it's fun. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? The vibrational state. Yeah. Well, if you can maintain awareness of the internal working of the shift between frequencies, then you have what I'm uh, what I've always called synchronous states, or what Tom calls parallel processing. Um, okay. You're in, or I would be in. I could be fully embodied fully experiencing five separate environments that were completely separate locations all at the same time. And so, yes, that held my spectrum of attention much wider. And so, of course, it was going to catch my fascination. But in that, I could see I was not just in one landing location. I was in many. And the one that would get my attention the most, you know, because of the processes with the body, was inside my own biological system. So there'd always be entities and they're with me and I would be getting tours of the internal workings of my body, of my physical systems. This information, aside from the fact that it happened, was just too much. It was beyond me to bring back. I, you're going to have to have a mathematical mind, a, I'm a, bio, yeah. you know, a scientific mind, somebody who knows more about, you know, the systems of the body than I did, you know, to bring back that information. But I could bring back that I was there, that it was happening, that there were other entities there, you know, explaining it to me. Um, and even things that uh, were being fixed, for instance, one of my OBEs was, this is again a time travel. So I time traveled to my 15 year old self I was outside my window, looking in at her having an OBE <laughs> and I could see what the 15 year old me was experiencing in the OBE. It was a contact. There was a nurse <laughs> there in the room with me. And these were the ETs. They, yeah. They were taking hair samples and blood samples and all kinds of samples. And I'm like, what are they doing? Why are they doing that? You know? And, uh, uh, I, you know, was told, you know, it was, 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 it was Wilson's disease. And I was, it was actually, that disorder was actually being corrected in me. So like, if they found that it was there, they suspected it was there. And if they found it was there, then they would fix it. And that was, had to do with the Kundalini processes too. And all this has to do with all time being all at once. <laughs> Which is a big thing to go into. But this is one example of how that awareness started coming to me, not in a, um, you know, like as a mental idea or as a thought, but something that I'm actually experiencing. I mean, I'm, I'm there as my much older self and uh, I'm there as my much older self and I'm actually there in the same time as my much younger self. <laughs> so yeah, one moment in time in which all of that was happening, you know, we discern that linearly as different points in time, but in the experience you're having, all of those points in time were occurring at the same time, so yeah. all at once. And so, you know, it, it began working into my system that that's the reality of it. Wow. So there's a <laughs> lot going on, Casey. There's a lot. Oh, it, yeah. Okay. So where do we go from there? Okay, so um, following uh, for four years of these these processes, it, it came time for that to complete and me to go on to the next new leg of the journey. Uh, and you uh, mean the Kundalini to complete its journey? The Kundalini had completed its work. Um, okay. There was no longer a need for me to be going out so much. Uh, 
my attention was already mostly on the inner fields uh, and they needed me to be in physical space now because now our service was in effect. <laughs> so you don't just have this happen and, and not find yourself in service. And so now it was time to go out there and I experienced a, a bit of depression then at this point. Um, not uh, because- Casey, they... you... So, sorry, you, you, you refer to them as day, right? Who's day? Uh, my entire inner uh, networking of beings within my soul complex. Okay. And are they experienced as individuals or like a group entity that's working through you or, or guiding you? Both, but very much so, as you can see in the photos that I'm going to show you. In fact, let's go ahead and put those up now while while we talk. Um, okay. And these are, these are I'm, I'm I'm able to discern and uh, fragment uh, the beings into their individual selves, and I will take my mirror off because. So yeah. I'm not sure if you're able. Yeah, to see. I mean, I, I was looking at some of these in in the email you sent me, and it's just incredible, incredible. So so these these are a group of of beings that have been working with you. Yeah, I'll just say that real, real quick, that we're seeing here just a tiny fraction of the beings that have come through to date, and they do come through a crystal, <laughs> Isa, a very specific crystal. Um, but roughly four to 500 of the beings have come through so far, and it's my understanding that as many as 2,000 will come through before this leg of the journey is done. Okay. Okay. So yeah. you, 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 okay. So just go back to, you were going through a little bit of depression. What, what, what came next, Casey? Yeah, I had to, I had to work my way through that. Um, and it took me a few years, uh, but during those years, mm, they were an important few years because the fundamental basis of my service is uh, the unconditional. And that's when I started being clear on that. Uh, Las Vegas, uh, Los Angeles is a place where there is a, uh, an enormously large population of homeless. Mm. And what I did was I went out and I started taking care of them. I, I was out there myself. I'll just go ahead and say yeah. at this point, I was going, yeah. I, I, I I was throwing the world away. I didn't want to be a part of it anymore. I didn't want to do anything conditionally. In fact, it, it actually broke me inside to even think of, of that. I couldn't go to work for pay anymore like that. And especially because I'm a caregiver, it's like, how am I supposed to charge yeah. for that? <laughs> you know? yeah. So the whole idea of the unconditional w w was coming through at this point. So I had gone out into Los Angeles and was just living out of my car and taking care of homeless. And they were just everywhere. Just you, and this is not an understatement. There's no two feet you can stand on in Los Angeles and not see them everywhere. And it's interesting to me because I never did. I did not realize that until that moment. So I started feeding. Um, I'm a medical caregiver. I was treating wounds. Uh, they would often be in fights and uh, there's mm. often exposure wounds and I would treat treat them and, and feed and clothe. And I had a variety of areas that I would go to. And during that time, I would, um, I had already started writing, but I would write about these concepts as well. And I started a project called the 1111 Project. Uh, and I tried to garner support uh, and well, bring this to people's attention that this was happening and garner support for going out there to care for those ones that were most right in front of me. And that lasted for a few years. And until I ran it, I spent all my own money until I completely ran, I did it until I completely ran out of money. And then I had to go to work as a medical caregiver again. And the person that uh, I found who needed my assistance uh, happened to live in a place that was just ideal for the crystal work to begin. And this is where it actually started happening. She lived in a house high up in the Pacific Palisades that had just this gorgeous, stunning view of the ocean. Um, and 
the sunrises and sunsets, you know, through these windows, through this little room that uh, I would be in, there was a little care room for, for me so that I wasn't sitting directly in her space when I was there. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I would just uh, sit, sit there in the room and it was anyway, uh, there were overnight shifts uh, often and uh, I, I would be curled up in this little ball on this little love sofa with this little table in front of me. And I, I always brought Issa with me wherever I went. I was actually sent so, out to find her years earlier. Yeah. Tell us how you how you came in, in contact with the crystal. What drew you yeah, to the that crystal? Was, that was through an OBE, coming out of an OBE. Can you give us a picture of the crystal again in the background that might be nice I'll just show you her. yeah Lisa. okay incredible. it's just a mildly citrine clear quartz crystal okay and yeah i i i didn't have any crystals <laughs> i wasn't a crystal so person and I'm like, go out and find my crystal. And I'm like, well, I'm in Santa Monica. You know, I say Los Angeles, but I'm mostly around the Santa Monica area. Um, the crystal shops everywhere. I mean, it's j just everywhere. You can't round a corner without coming in contact with a crystal shop in that area. And so, you know, and it wasn't big on my mind. It was just like anything you wake up, you log and you sort of remember it when you do. And every now and again, I would find myself walking by shop and I would go in and I, I wouldn't see anything. It actually took me years. But then one day I walked in a shop and there she was. I knew her right away. I picked her up and she immediately gave me her name, Isa. I mean, it was, it just reverberated through my entire hand and arm, you know, and I'm like, Isa, I'm like, that's an, that's an interesting name. I've never even heard that name before. So I did a little search on that when I got back home and it turns out to be the female name for Jesus. Isa de Jesus is how any other country refers okay. to Jesus as Isa de Jesus. Um, and okay. so, you know, that was interesting to me because I also have no religious background. Um, there's, there's no book that I belong to. I've always been spiritually minded. You know, my meditations began really early in life, uh, but it was an open awareness, absolutely non-judgmental, <laughs> I guess, what, which may be perfect for the work. But uh, yeah, I don't know where we were before we started talking about Isa. Uh, we were out on the land so taking you were, care of people, I think. Yeah. And yeah. So you were up in that little room and the, the light was coming room. in. I yeah. was waking up one day and the, the uh, it, it was a little room. It was a little, I let, literally had to curl up on my side to sleep on this little love seat. <laughs> and the table was literally right in front of my face and Issa was just sitting there. The light was coming in and I, my eyes open and I was like, wow, she is just stunning. You know, I would <laughs> just, just stunning. Um, and I, I was looking and I, I, I thought I was starting to see movement and activity. And so um, before that, let me say, I just felt like taking a picture. That's a part we actually left out. There was a period of time where I was just getting these urges to take pictures. Like I'd be walking in the park past a particular tree and I'd be like, that is just stunning. And I mean, it would just be gorgeous. And so I would like want to take a picture. And then later I would go to look at that picture and there'd be a little entity in it. Things like that were happening. <laughs> okay. And so, yeah. Any long story short, I started taking pictures of Isa, not of the beings. I mean, I wish she's just gorgeous. And I took a picture of the crystal, not not just the crystal, just to have a, you know. And yeah, yeah. I would look at look at the photo and there'd be an entity there. <laughs> yeah. So that's sort of how it started. Um and it wasn't something that I had time for when you're working as a medical caregiver. It's often 24 seven around the clock. It's exhausting work. Um, mm -hmm. And most of my jobs following that point were extreme. They were extreme hospice cases from home that, and you know, that I would often take these by myself. So the family wouldn't have to deal with multiple staff members and the hazard, the horrors mm -hmm. of all that. <laughs> um, and so like, I was just working myself to the bone. And so it was, I'm going to say 2019 before I'm looking at the crystal again at all. And it's 2020 when 
divine intervention stepped in um, and put forth a person who made it possible for me for roughly a year and a half, two years to focus only on this work. All my bills were handled by this person so that I could explore this, uh, so I could open my consciousness platform. I do teach meditation. Uh, I mentor in the OBE. Uh, I'm a sort of spiritual counselor, if you will, um, and, and, and more. We do the crystal work now as well. So, yeah. yeah, that's just sort of what opened it all up. Okay, so tell me what's gone on with these beings and the crystals and how they're coming forward, getting your attention and how you're getting these images of them, right? Because like, so again, I, I've known you for quite some time and you actually made, when I was seeing all this, I went out and I, I bought a crystal, right? Mm -hmm. I couldn't get anything like you were getting. I bought a crystal. I was trying, you know, putting it up, trying to take photographs. I couldn't get anything like what was coming through your crystal. Yeah. Well, I think that it's a, I think that you could, mm. um, but it is a very particular service. And so the crown being opened, um, the understanding of the unconditional service. So there's never a charge associated with the work that we do. Uh, we do welcome support. <laughs> I'll just say that real quick. Um, but we don't insist upon it. Everything is out there for everybody to view. Um, anybody who wants mentoring or any of that, there's never a charge. If, if you want to donate, you can. But um, uh, so there was the un unconditional service knowing. So once that's gotten, um, well, there, there's actually quite, there's so much involved in this. It would be really hard for me to like break, break it down. So I'll just say that open crown, unconditional service, and then being willing yourself to be of service. So there's entities, beings working with us through any service such as this. Uh, and there has to be a certain willingness to work with those beings. So um, that was why I was having all of the experiences that I was with the ETs prior to this <laughs> was to prepare my system for being able to work with the ETs and not just a few. In my case, it's hundreds, if not thousands. Okay. And Casey, who uh, are they? That's a really good question. And so, where do they come from? Where do they reside and and what do what do they want with us earthlings? We we hmm. let me start this in a different way. Okay. The very first thing. So what we're seeing here is something was a de desire in me to help people see, to people to help people understand where in a time of a shift that it has the uh, potential to be an, an entire paradigm shift, meaning from the third dimension into the fourth, um, and that there is an extraterrestrial reality. And that is what 4560 is, or what some people call the astral. The astral is galactic okay. space. It's the people, some people, and that's the consensus area of galactic space. A lot of people experiencing the astral are experiencing their own personal private territory of the astral. <laughs> mm. And yes, that's a little bit different. But mm. consensus space is 4560, galactic space. Okay. Um, but what started coming through first are entire stories in a single I frame. An entire okay. story. So a packet, okay. a data packet comes in. Yes. So this is why I say the crystal is a communications piece. It's a communications device. I'm I'm working with the crystal. The crystal's working with me in the same way that we work with our cell phones. Yeah. Okay. Inside here is a crystal or a crystal silicone chip nowadays. Um, the rest is just housing. It's just casing. And but interface. without that crystal chip in there, this is nothing. This is a piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> okay, so that's the first thing to understand. You don't need the casing. You can work with just the crystal. If the crystals okay. will work with you and it takes a particular um, agreement, 
Okay. And that agreement is um, unconditional. That agreement is uh, non-judgmental. Absolutely non-judgmental. Okay, because if fear so, comes to it, then it changes the whole thing in the elemental realm. Well, now the reason that I can do this, whereas other people can't yet, or not a lot of other people can yet, um, is because the elemental realm is not working in cooperation with them. Okay. So the elemental realm within this crystal is agreeing to make formations for us that can be consensually viewed, meaning when I look at this gal right here, you're seeing essentially the same thing. Okay. Yeah, there's there's not a question about what you're seeing. That's a, That face there is as clear as yours or mine is, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And is the, is the crystal a conscious being? Absolutely. Okay. As okay. is everything. So it has its own individual, unique consciousness, uh, and it's willing to open itself up as a portal to to somehow link you and these be astral beings, right? Or ETs. Yeah. Okay. So this is a consciousness, and yeah. I am it, it, um, evidenced by a structure. I am a consciousness yeah. evidenced by a structure. Yeah. And yeah. the consciousness of this crystal is agreeing, and uh, my consciousness is agreeing to merge. So we actually merge consciousness. Yeah. And I'm I'm doing with, it. With, Even my vision is going to start to yeah. change if I start to do it. But my vision will become okay. kaleidoscopic. You know, when we merge, okay. my vision alters, my brainwave frequencies alters. Okay, and all of this allows me to let in information beyond the beta brainwave spectrum. Okay, so okay. a lot of this has to do with brainwaves, uh, mm. which has to do with meditation, and which has to do yeah. with the shift. All we're talking about the same thing, regardless of whether yeah. we're talking about the crystal in this work or meditation or the 3D, 4D shift, we're talking about the very same thing. So that's okay. what this work is designed to do, to help people shift their brainwaves. So most of the regular population aren't people who are probably going to ever make time to sit down and meditate, mm. or at least not on any kind of regular basis, <laughs> right? But they can look at one of these beings, take their gaze, whoops, I'm sorry, take their gaze into the eyes of one that's of okay. these beings and as they do that, as they do a talk into those eyes, their brain waves are going to start to shift. And if they don't go into fear, a really interesting thing is going to start to happen. <laughs> and we can simply call that contact. You can't stay 3D separate in 4D space. I think I froze. Am I back? Garrett did. We'll just wait for him to come back. <laughs> you have to. Yeah, there we go. OK, so are we back recording? OK, great. So. We put through too much energy. <laughs> OK, that's what it seemed like. I got a thumbs up and then boom, my my Wi-Fi went. Oh, okay. no. Yeah, yeah. I... Uh oh. Are you there? Garrett, you're frozen on my end. Just, I just had to. 
So we were talking about shifting the brainwave, brainwave patterns through the crystal. Yes. And that, this work has that as a focus. So um, whether we are uh, talking about uh, meditation and changing the brain waves to achieve meditative states uh, or anything else, uh, we're talking about the same thing. Okay. So the way you, I'm going to do the thumbs up thing again. It's just, it won't stop doing it. So <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I, I think it um, wants to come true. But the way that you work with these frames is, is for Tritok. So you use them deliberately for conscious gazing, eye okay. gazing into the eyes of the beings. Okay. And when you start to do that, a very interesting thing happens. Uh, I'm not sure if you have ever practiced Tritok before. A little bit. Yeah. I, just like gazing into a candle and not blinking. That was my pr short practice, like a, a minute or a little bit longer than a minute right. at a time. So yeah. Once you do have your gaze set, once the mind is concentrated, once the eyes are not blinking, what happens is the space between you and what you're gazing at begins to go away. And the very same thing will happen here. Okay. Okay. So we are talking about contact. We are talking about shifting your brain waves into a, a frequency structure that will take you into galactic space. Okay. Into, we could also say, the astral. <laughs> okay. Or a okay. phase, right? That, that was something. So we, we'll just, we'll just, okay. Cause there's a lot of people who, you know, the, the viewers of this, uh, this podcast, right. And, and the listeners, mm -hmm. they mightn't be familiar with what we're talking about. Right. A lot of them are just into consciousness, spiritual awakening. So we'll just quickly just go over these, uh, these ways of shifting our awareness beyond our physical reality. Right. And it could be Maybe. true. The OBE, right? It could be an out of body, classic OBE, out of out of body. It could be through phasing in meditation where we get into a meditative state, shift our awareness, and we pick up a, a new data stream, right? Where we receive right. information, we can interact with it. It could be a lucid dream. It could be a dream, right? And I, I, I want to say it shifts us out of 3D physical yes. space. Yes. Okay. The astral is a physical space. Okay. It's not... It has a consensus territory, mm. okay? Like here in the earth life, we're in a consensus field and it's physical, it's real. Mm. So is the astral. The astral has a consensus space. I'm calling it galactic space. That's where all of the other planets and all of the other star systems and all of the other galaxies are. Uh, your experience territory uh, expands, okay? And we can do this right now uh eyes wide open in this lifetime and one of the first awarenesses that has to come to you in order for this to mm, take its full effect is very simple challenging to do for most people especially if you're not very open-minded but it is simply taking two concepts and putting them on a level playing field. The concepts are dream and reality. Mm -hmm. That was one of the very first things my inner being was demanding of me when the Kundalini started and I started going out of body. Put reality and dream on a level playing field. They wanted okay. me to realize that when I woke up every morning, I was still dreaming. Mm. Yep. Okay. Now, when you do this, uh, your your neural network, your brain changes because now you have a new awareness, right? You were putting some twos and twos together in a different way than before, whereas before you were separating the two, reality over here, and that's real. And dream over here, and that's not real. <laughs> and so long as you do that, you will not graduate here. Mm. Okay. So it's the very first thing that really has to happen. So, Casey, my book is called Waking Up from the Dream. And it was based on me waking up from the dream in this reality, as yeah. opposed to waking up from the, you know, the lucid dream or my 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 every every uh 
you know, my normal dream states. Mm. I woke up, I woke up in this dream and became lucid here or yeah. something greater than me. Yeah. And an interesting thing happens, right? Something that's completely surprising. Mm. You wake up from the dream, but not out of it. Yeah. 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 You're still here. Waking up from the dream means coming into the awareness that, oh, I'm not the dreamer, mm. <laughs> right? Mm. <laughs> so, so that's that's waking up from it. You're you are not the dreamer. That means something else is the dreamer, and you start yes. asking, "Well, exactly. if I'm not the dreamer, who's the dreamer?" Who's and the then dreamer? that question is what starts minimizing the space between you and that one. Mm -hmm. And that one is going to be what other people call your higher self or higher fractal consciousness, mm -hmm. uh, the one closest to you. Yeah. And the one closest to me is this guy right here. His name's Quinn. Um, but there's a few of them. One of them is an Anunnaki being. I, I don't know what that is. Can you introduce us to them? Can you give us some individual ones, Casey? And and mm -hmm. and then just explain how they come through the crystal, right? And because I'm sure people are sitting here now watching this fascinated, right? H how are you capturing these images, right? How are these beings coming through and 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 grabbing your attention? It confuses people, but because they haven't heard of it before. But it no. really is so simple. You have the crystal. You have a yeah. camera. You put your camera yeah. right up on the crystal and you start looking around. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it really is that simple. Now, there is some complexity to that. Um, for instance, uh, there are portals that uh, make it easier for the signals, the transmissions to be sent and received here on my end. Um, uh, solstices equinoxes, uh, sunset, sunrise, all of these are portals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's many more, um, but that's a few. So like if you're working with the crystal during those times, much more likely for the signals to get through. Um, sometimes signals, messages, stories are stored in here, just like emails are in your phone. To get those, you need to be putting this crystal where both the moonlight and sunlight can be uh, having access to it. So I often have Isa on the windowsill. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, also, there are geometries. So if I'm going into the body of this crystal, for instance, there's some inner planes in here. That's what stores the data. Um, the crystal itself has to have nice sharp edges here where the faces meet. If they're edges are rounded, you won't be able to catch the geometries, the correct geometries to get mm. the data. But also you have to be able to shift your brainwave, free, your brainwave frequencies. So unconditional, absolute non-judgment, uh, no fear, uh, extreme curiosity, delight, joy. Uh, these yeah. are, these are energies that the elemental realm adore. Okay. And so they childlike, adore childlike quality, right? Childlike yes, just exactly. wanted to play, it's, see what exactly comes through. Exactly. Your heart bursting, right? Yeah, yeah. And no matter what you see, like some people have a hard time seeing, whoops, that can, guy. Can you, can you pop them up on the bigger image? <laughs> okay. So can you do the, the bigger images? Like give us one, one, and then tell us a little bit about one of them or. Um, there's not a, not a lot I can tell you about them. I can tell you, you know, very little. I'm going to say that. Um, the work is very demanding. And do I have them the right way? Yeah, I have yeah, them. yeah, yeah. You have to move, shift to your so left. So this is Shaw. Okay. Mm. Nobody has trouble seeing Shaw. <laughs> so we like putting him up. Um, he was the first one to come through this close, this in your face. And he is Yael. If you ask me, he is Yael. Um, that's a race of beings who were created uh, between a race of grays and humans. He's, uh, they're hybrid. I don't know much about them myself, but I know I have contact with them because uh, that's from the OBEs. 
Mm. Um, some of the beings actually have uh, communicated with me in the OBE. They they come into the OBE. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what? Okay, so what do they want? What's like they? Uh, did they come to teach? Did they come to pass on information? Is there any gifts that they give? I mean, do they always turn up with a certain form or are they formless? Do they come just with awareness? I have so many questions. They very much have form. Okay. <laughs> they have bodies just like us. They okay. live in galactic space. Do they live I in a physical reality to them or is it? It is a four, five or six D physical reality. Yes. Okay. Four, five, six D is galactic space here we're just right now we're in galactic space earth is in galactic space we're in a galaxy mm. <laughs> we're just locked on the planet yeah and there's a reason we're locked on the planet tell me <laughs> let's, let's, let's do a talk on that one day and really blow some people's <laughs> mind <laughs> Um, so there's many ways to conceptualize our planet, right? A lot, a lot of people like to conceptualize it as a school. Yeah. Right. But there's other ways too, right? Prison. A prison. Prison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people see it as a prison. Yeah. Well, when you're locked in somewhere. Yeah. Right. Okay. Light cased in, in form, right? Yeah. So yeah. you would see that because you can't get out of this form. You can get out of this form. Yes. You just aren't. Well, and okay. you you always find yourself back in this form, right? That's my experience. You, you can, can get out, but you, yeah. You're in a lot of different forms. All of the beings are all of my different forms. They, they are who and where I am looking like elsewhere, <laughs> right? Uh, some of them are friends. They're not all me. Some of them are friends. Um. I, I dropped the ball there. Okay, no, it's fine. Anyway, right. So we're we're in a prison. <laughs> oh yeah, there, there's many ways to conceptualize. Being okay, here. okay, so, okay. Um, yeah. So if you were to look at it that way, as as we're in a prison, um, you can't get out of a prison that you don't know that you're in. Mm. All right. So the being is coming here to show us that there is a larger space, that there is life elsewhere. We'll bring more to your attention that you're stuck here. You can't even get off the planet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you might yeah. start wondering about why that is. Okay. Right. Aren't these just things that, well, why? I, yeah. I, I, I mean, if you genuinely ask yourself, a genuine answer will start to come. Uh, the first two things that we have to do is figure out who we are and mm -hmm. why we're here. Mm -hmm. Until we do these two things, we're going nowhere. Okay. And so this is what these guys are kind of, this is through me. This is what we're coming to do. We're coming to be in your face. <laughs> Okay, so so we're in this karmic cycle, this wheel of of life and death. Back in, you know, we do a life, we're back in again. We're in this karmic wheel of thinking the same thing. So yeah. let's make it let's make it more personal to ourselves because when we look at it as life and death, uh, a lot of people don't even believe there is anything else after death. But it just makes it bigger and mm -hmm. out there and over there. <laughs> let's bring it right here. Yeah, we're in this wheel of thinking the same thing <laughs> yeah. yeah all right and we have to identify the thought or thoughts that are pinning us here okay. now a lot of those are going to be um, conditionally constructed thoughts uh judgmentally constructed thoughts right um thoughts that bring us down into the nether regions mm -hmm. all right yeah. all of that pins us here yes yeah, everything that we uh, think, everything we feel, let ourselves feel, any energies that we let run through our body, for instance, if we're letting the energy of judgment run through our system, that pins us here. Mm. Okay, so your work is to open people's eyes, right? So these beings are coming true, right? We can clearly see that's that. Look, to, to me, that has a face, that has eyes, that has a mouth, that has a nose, and it's showing itself through this crystal, right? You're capturing it. You're having communication with it. Is there messages that come through with the images? I can do that. Yes. I don't have time. 
I, okay. haven't, I haven't had time yet. Okay. Um, so it's it's continuous. It's a lot just to do this work, and this is just mm -hmm. one part of our platform. Okay. Yeah. So and the we... spiritual counseling is another. The meditation yeah. is another. Zooms are another. The making of the videos is another. The website oh, is another. Listen. I mean, it, and I have nobody to help me. Not I... not build any of it or yeah. anything. Yeah. So it's all a hundred percent me. So I I'm... just don't have time. I can either mm, do the crystal work and get the pics out for people to have contact with, or mm. I can just stop that and me make it selfish. <laughs> start connecting so far um uh while we have been doing all of the the major work bringing the beings through in the format that you see here uh it's been more important for me to connect with my dream state so i have been bringing back dreams daily for years now while i do this now the next leg of, there is a next leg of the journey and that's when my so we started with the formations okay the information is forthcoming. That means I need to open my vocal channel. And I am somebody who practices silence on a regular basis. So that has not been easy through my system. Um, I don't use my voice much. <laughs> You're doing a good job today, Casey. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been having to use it more, you know, since the work has started, obviously, but, you know, on a regular basis, I might not speak for days. I might not use my voice, you know, uh, so, so uh, is channeling starting to come through and he's being starting to want to, to use the vocal cords. I am a channel, um, but okay. because I was resistant to that. Um, I don't, um, I'm not consciously resistant to that. I'm consciously wanting that to happen so much. Mm. <laughs> Okay. So somebody who knows a lot more than me can start conversing with everybody. Um, uh, but there has been a, the Talu chakra is open. It's, it's wide open. Uh, the problem is, is at the base. And uh, that has to do with the experience. I can't open my eyes in. Uh, and I have started making some headway there. And so I'm, I'm hoping that we've just done something recently that's going to incite that. Um, but for right now, we just have the formations and the, I connect enough to get a, a name and not that they necessarily have names. Some of them do, uh, some of them don't, but they'll give me a frequency to work with that. I can, sometimes it's a location. A lot of times and there, it sounds like a name, but then I'll do a search on it. And I'm like, Oh, that's an actual city somewhere, <laughs> wow. you know? And so they'll start talking to me that way. Mm. Yeah, and then there's some things that you easily pick up on. Like, I instantaneously knew he was Yael -Ya as soon as I saw his eyes. So, um, you know, and some things will come through like that. But I just don't have time to sit and really connect. Okay, okay. Yeah. So the dream work, is that part of, of communicating with these beings or is it just something totally separate? It is. Yeah. No, it we is. just, we meet in the dream state. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And can I, okay. So you meet, Wait, in which the dream is state. by the way, the out of body state. Okay. Um, yeah. The dream state we're talking about the out of body state for me, at least yes. at this point, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I mean, again, what, what I'm going to ask is that do they, are they given messages for you to pass on? Is there, I, I mean, are you, writing are you journaling are you putting this into videos on your website anything like that constantly constantly okay, but this is okay. not necessarily information that any being wants you to know it's just what i know i'm supposed to write about next okay you know and so you know concepts will come through time travel you know that kind of stuff okay Okay. Yeah. So that that's all up on the website. Uh, I I post there regularly. I have I'm, a forum board, and we talk about we discuss these things there. Mostly, what these guys are used for is to talk eye to eye, gazing with the beings, and adapting your human central nervous system for contact. That is what we're doing. It's a tangible thing. It's a visceral thing. It's an experience. It's we're going to we're not going to tell you something that's going to just go into the back of your brain. We want you to experience something and that something is contact and 
the conscious shift out of the beta brainwave frequencies, which is essentially earth space, mm -hmm. so that you can experience an expanded space. <laughs> All right, expand your experience territory. Yeah, that's what we're working on right now. And like, what is coming true, Casey? Like, what what do these beings want when 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 the connection is made? Are they giving us like, is there information? That's what they're doing. They're putting their face there for you to take your gaze, yeah, into their gaze, unblinkingly. You talk to the being. You connect with the being. Okay. We're giving you contact. Okay. Contact itself. Okay. As far as the stories, they give me a whole bunch of information in story form. So I was, the first story that ever came through the crystal was my own birth into this earth life. Okay. Okay. And I could see the entire story. I can actually shift into them also. I'm an OBE -er, so it's very easy for me to actually just shift right into that environment and look around. <laughs> so yeah. um, uh, then the Titans came through, uh, you know, I was being told about my connection with the giants. Um. Uh, indigenous Indians with uh, uh, Sasquatch Yeti came through uh, telling me my connection there. In fact, my first OBEs, the beings that come down into my room for a long time were only indigenous Indians, not local, very clearly not local indigenous Indian, but all indigenous Indian. Yeah, indigenous to their uh, worlds. Um, Fascinating. You know, I was told about Egypt and its destruction, ancient Egypt and its destruction by Tron's AI. Wow. Um, you know, so just stories like this come through. Other people aren't going to be able to read these. You're going to have to shift your, it'll just look like a blob of nothing. Whereas me, it's as clear as your face is right there because I can shift my frequencies just like you have to tune the radio dial to get a particular channel. You got to get the information coming through that channel by turning the dial. Same thing here. You got to turn the dial to that which the information is on and then it's just clear as day. And there could be nothing more mind blowing than when that happens. You know, because, you, you know, at first you knew you couldn't see anything. It just looked like a blob of nothing. And so it's like, how did I not see that? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's unbelievable. And where are you seeing this, Kate? Is this in the mind's eye? Just just give me a... No, like, it's in the it's In the, picture. In the crystal. Like, in the crystal in, and, and through the picture, right? What, what okay. you're seeing here was a tiny bit. Like imagine on this entire backdrop, one particular point, just a little tiny pinprick. Mm. I went into that pinprick and blew it up for you. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that's what it what that's what's there in that. <laughs> but imagine how many other pinpricks, how much how many other bits of data could cover in this whole whole yeah. field back here. Yeah. Okay. It's big. An entire story just comes through a single frame. Yeah. But I can go into one of those bits and enlarge it for you, which is what I learned how to do. Wow. And can you give us just a few more, just a, a few more, uh, put a few more images up of the, the sure. beings? Uh, let's see, there's said. Wow. I love him. Wow. He's, he's my preference to practice to talk with right now. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Really, really fascinating. Yeah. Can you give us a few more? Just. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm trying to listen in on what people in the audience are thinking and feeling and saying right now. That's Aria. She's oh. beautiful. She's a fish. <laughs> She's a she fish. She looks a bit fishy, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's underwater, and you can see over her head. If you get really good at looking at this data, that right there is the head of an eagle, and this is its wingspan. She's actually seeing it flying over. <laughs> she's <Wow>. like, <laughs> or or has the eagle actually got the fish in its talons? Right? It could be. It could also be. It doesn't because I I could see the entire frame. You know, as okay. I'm taking. So what I'm actually seeing when I'm going into the crystal. Uh, taking my camera lens and my gaze through that camera lens, you know, inside. Um, 
and out beyond you have to go out beyond the body of this crystal otherwise you can only go into it and that's a limited territory mm -hmm. but you can go out beyond the body of this crystal by just going into a triangulated point where three of the faces are meeting at a particular point so if you focus your gaze i mean your camera lens right into that point it diffracts all the light and you just got a blank board there now and you know signals can be sent through the sun which is how they're sent uh to me, the other mean of the crystal. Fascinating. Fascinating. So, it is. okay. So it is. what I'll do is I'll put links to your website and your different platforms and the form. I'll, I'll put them uh, in the description. So if anyone wants to go and, and look, I mean, that's just. I'm just going to flash through a bunch of them. Yeah, do, do. Okay, yeah. Everybody. That's kind of like fox looking, right? Fox like or animal. Oh, no, that's Quinn. Okay. That looks like a mushroom. That's Mirror. Just because I have her so low. She's actually a duck-like species. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure. Well, we... we... <laughs> that's Zebediah. He's an, he's an ancient. That's incredible. That looks like a baby lion, right? The face of a baby lion looking, looking true to me. Am I right here? He's a, oh man, you can even see the gray hair on the side of his head. Incredible. Um, that cannot be more human looking. I mean, no. Yeah. He's from a group called the Ore. They are seers. And that's okay. why he's working with me. Star Fascinating. Child. Fascinating. Wow. I, I played around with that one. I put some other things in the frame. <laughs> wow. They're incredible faces. That's Quinn just facing sideways. Wow. And and can they can you catch the same being in different different angles of the crystals? Like you could come back a week later, look around and catch the same being. Uh most of the signals that I'm catching are coming through the sun going out beyond the body of the crystal that's not data stored in the crystal for me. Um, so the beings can embed themselves as data in the crystal and I can find them and then go okay. uh, like that would yeah. be like you dialing somebody's phone number. Yeah. Uh, so visually, I would find their data point, you know, in the crystal, but then and that would tell them that I'm calling them and then they could come through live. Wow. So there are, there are live calls. There are live contacts that are, are wow. happening. Yeah. So yeah, it's just think of it just like a phone. Sometimes you're, they called and you weren't there. And so they left a message and you have to go into your voicemails. Sometimes that happens through the crystal. And then sometimes they're calling and, and it's live. You're there. You can answer the phone and you're both there. So yeah, both of right. those things happen. And yeah, it's extraordinary when it does. This was my, this was my favorite, right? I, I saw this one in the, in the, in the package you sent me with all the, I was just like, wow, that's incredible. It's a cute little guy who just recently came through. Fascinating. Move out of the way. We can't leave out keys. Wow. I mean, be shown. yeah, that's just <sighs> incredible. I, I mean, I'm, I, yeah, that's a really good one where you can actually see the, the light refraction from the crystal yeah. uh, as, well, as well as keys. So, I mean, so have you brought these to like experts, like, and, 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 you know, okay. So, so straight away, my mind goes to someone like Tom Campbell. Right. And, and have you, yeah, have I you tried shown... to tell him what I was doing, but it's uh, his, his, his mind is working in another direction because uh, he's helping people with something else. Yes. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. His, his mission is very, um, it's it's all around it, the model and science base, but I mean these are you can't deny that there's something is coming through these crystals, right? And and they have facial structures and they, they especially yeah. if you will allow yourself to gaze mm. your eyes into their eyes, um, then there's no doubt because you're going to be starting to experience 
the contact. And it's much like when the Kundalini comes through, there is an energetic shift you will feel through your body when this happens. Um, everything softens, mm -hmm. you know, your mind softens, your eyes soften, you know, you start to glow a little, or at least I do. <laughs> or, or you may feel your fear, you know, and, and back out of it, yeah. you know. Yeah. Some of them are going to be more challenging to to gaze at than others. Okay. But, and some will start to back off as soon as they feel something enter their their territory. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah they'll, you know, have the thought this isn't right or yes. there's something evil happening, or you know what I mean? They'll collapse down on it. I mean, that that even happens with my work, with the energy work I do. People are like, oh, what is this energy? I need to stop it. I mean to make sure it's okay. I, you know, they they yeah. They block it, you know, until they uh, can test the water a little bit. And then all of a sudden it's like, OK, well, I'm fine with this now. So I, yeah. I guess this is something similar. And Casey, it is. I and and you don't need me there with you. Like you, the people need you there to do the energy work with them. We've already done the energy work. We've encapsulated yeah. it in these frames and you can yeah. work with any number of the hundreds of frames I've put out there now. Okay. So Patreon is where we have all of these guys. Yeah. Um, I will say, and there's, there's, there's no paywall. We don't do our Patreon that way. Um, so everything is just right out there for everybody right. to see. So nobody yeah. has to support that does not want to. Um, and they have an interesting new thing now called collections. And so if you're only interested in this work and not my OBEs or my teaching, or there I go again, um, <laughs> then you can go into collections and crystal contact and just scroll through a stream of hundreds of these guys. <laughs> yeah. And what you would suggest is to... to save it save an image on your computer pin it up and then just eye gaze with it right and just be open to what comes true if you do a screen grab you're not going to get as full of a, you're not going to get all the pixels it'll still work sure. but you won't get all the pixels um the maybe the forum board my forum board is the best place to view okay. them we also have a okay. very large stream there um that platform allows the most pixels i can uh, you know uh i think patreon they'll put it up to a certain size yeah 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 It'd lose some so, quality but uh, the thing that people don't know about there and because our work is mostly visual let me say you actually have to click on the picture then it opens full size right <laughs> Okay. Some people just scroll through the page and they're not getting the full pixels. But if you click on it, <laughs> fascinating. So, so I'll I'll put all the links to the the Patreon, uh, the message boards, your website, your YouTube, and people can can explore. Um, yeah, please. Um, that's another place to explore uh, the videos on the videos. on YouTube. Absolutely. So I'm redoing the streams at present, but there is one video right now with 50 of the most lifelike that you can scroll through. And I'm working on a compilation called The Crystal Work Explained that step by step takes you through everything that I can think of to say. And once I'm out of things to say, I'll put all of the clips together in a single compilation. And that wow. will have many scrolls of many hundreds of the beings when that's done. Wow. Casey, I think I think we've come to the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fascinating. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Usually, usually we go for about 90 minutes. So, um, yeah, I think we've gone over that now. Have we really? Uh, yes, we we've we've had a great conversation. Thank you very Good. much. Yeah, it's you are been, welcome. It's been amazing. I, I mean, I'm just so fascinated by what's coming through I, I i've always been right I, I i got my own crystals i started doing this a couple of years ago didn't get any results like you did but yeah still you can't you can though um sure. yeah you can yeah. and what, what you'll get are the storyboards as well you know what i mean but if you look into them you might be able to see where an eye is coming out at you yeah yeah. And if you zoom into that, maybe even just crop it right there, you'll start to see its face. Yeah, maybe sharpen it up a bit and color it up a bit if you didn't get enough, you, you know, so you can see it better. And 
you know, that will let you know it is happening and you can pursue it further if you wish. Yeah, I was just, I just ran at that. I was just like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, I can see the sales of crystals going up because I mean, <laughs> this has been fascinating. And then we had a lady on two weeks ago <laughs> called um, uh, Kristen Kirk and and the end of the, the conversation, she had a huge big crystal sitting beside her and it That's just, so it was fascinating. Cool. Yeah, it was fascinating. Yeah. Okay, so Casey, I guess we better wrap up on that note. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Gareth. No problem, Casey. And thank you to all <laughs> the, the viewers and listeners. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.